iOS 26 comes with a ton of new tools and updates, and after spending the last couple of months with it, I think I've figured out how to make the most out of the features that actually matter and set things up in a way that makes my iPhone a lot more useful. For myself, part of that is making the new liquid glass design look good, but also focusing on how I use my phone. Basically, how to make it more of a tool and less of a distraction in my day-to-day -day life and set things up in a way that is truly beneficial. With iOS 26 officially rolling out in the next couple of weeks, I thought it might be a good time to share exactly how and why I do all of these things. For anyone who is looking to do something similar or just wants to take advantage of the new tools on iOS to make their iPhone more effective. So with that said, let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Taurus. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Whether you like it or not, phones these days have become a big part of how we live our lives, and that can be both good and bad. They've become these insanely powerful tools that can help us get things done, track our health, or answer just about any question on the spot. But at the same time, they can also be a huge distraction, pulling us out of the moment and eating up way more of our time than we realize. The good news is, a lot of that comes down to how we set our phones up and how intentional we are using them. And with iOS especially this year, Apple has some great new features that make it easier to tip the balance in our favor. So we're the ones using our phones productively instead of letting them use us. For myself, I'm quite sensitive to how things are set up and what I access, and that is going to be different for everyone. So please take what you find useful here, modify it for your own needs, and feel free to just leave the rest. With that in mind, I want to start off with some of the basics. I am a highly visual person, so the way that my phone looks actually matters a lot to me. And with iOS 26, some of the biggest changes are visual anyway, plus some of these updates are going to set the stage for what we do later in the video. So let's kick things off talking about the wallpaper and the home screen. I'm sure everyone by now has at least seen some elements of Apple's new liquid glass design, and it does come with some new features with your wallpapers and your lock screen. For starters, if I hold down on my lock screen, you'll see it takes me to this edit screen where I can change wallpapers and the lock screen itself. I'm going to hit the plus button in the bottom corner to select a new wallpaper where if you're more of a photo person, you'll see a lot of your photos might have this new little 3D indicator and if you select those photos, iOS gives it this spatial parallax effect that's kind of neat. And there are some new things in here like a stretchy clock that I can make liquid glass and I can move my widgets location from the top of the screen to the bottom, which I couldn't do before. I personally like to use more abstract wallpapers and the only thing that I will say with wallpapers is if you plan on leaning into the liquid glass elements in your phone, it helps to have an image that doesn't fluctuate between light and dark too much. Otherwise, it does affect visibility. That being said, changing wallpapers isn't going to do much for us, and it's when we get into customizing the lock screen itself where things get a little more interesting. You'll notice, as always, we've got two controls at the bottom of the screen in the flashlight and the camera. The flashlight is fine for me here, but the camera button is unnecessary. On iOS, you can already swipe to the left on the lock screen to open the camera up, and if you have the new camera control button, that will also open the camera app, so I prefer to switch that out for something more useful. I've got mine set to the ChatGPT voice prompt because I often find it a lot more helpful than Siri, but there are literally dozens of things that you can use it for, so if there's anything that you find yourself using a lot on the go, I would definitely look through this list and think about adding a control for that here. Next, I'm going to add some lock screen widgets. I like to keep widgets to things that I either need to look at multiple times during the day or that track my progress throughout it. So for me, I like to put reminders that I have, the weather, and my fitness rings here. That's all I'm going to do here, but the home screen is where the fun really starts. Now, like I said, depending on the wallpaper that you have selected, you may want to switch around your icon style to be a bit more visible. And to do that, I'm just going to hold down on my screen, hit the edit button in the corner and hit customize. And then you can select from the default icons, 
dark, clear glass, or tinted options. I love the new liquid glass look, so I'll select clear, but these aren't very visible when they're light, so I'm going to select dark to add some contrast, and I'm going to hit the brightness icon in the corner to make the background pop a bit more. I also like to switch my icons to large to remove the text under them, which again is just personal preference. And now we're going to start doing some of the work to make our home screen function a bit better for us and where we're going to get really intentional about how we want to use our phone. Because this is all going to change based on the triggers that we set up after. I'll explain all of this in a minute, but while we're on the topic of making things more functional, I want to take a minute to talk about this week's sponsor. Torres. Torres just released their latest flagship, the O-Stand Q3 Air, and it is one of the coolest cases that I've tried in a while. First off, they're actually the number one brand for MagSafe stand cases on Amazon. They've got fantastic reviews, and the quality is great. The Q3 Air is built with this air cushion design that's inspired by sneaker airbags. You've got reinforced corners, built-in cushioning, and it's all military grade certified, which basically means you don't have to stress if your phone takes a hit outdoors. The sides have this unique dot matrix grip that makes it super easy to hold on to, especially if you're out vlogging or taking photos, and the design itself just feels bold and stylish. Plus, that 360 degree spin kickstand is a game changer. You get this super satisfying click every time you rotate it, and it adjusts to any angle, whether you're shooting, watching content, or just propping it up. You can get it for the current iPhone lineup and the brand new 17 series that was just announced, so be sure to check out the link in the description if you're interested. Alright, back to our home screen. What I'm going to do here is set up my screens for four different states. My standard layout for everyday use, a morning screen for when I first wake up, a fitness screen for workouts, and a work mode for when I want to lock in and be productive. The easiest way for me to plan this out is in freeform. That comes pre-installed on your iPhone, iPad, or Mac, where you can organize any apps or widgets you'd want for each state, or you can just jot those down in a notebook if you want to. For me, I really want to limit the interaction I have with my phone in the mornings, so I'm going to keep the morning state fairly restricted. I'll just have some weather data and health info in there, the waking up app that I use to declutter my brain, and a fitness widget for when I go on my morning walk. My standard state adds back in some work and entertainment apps that I use regularly. Fitness is stripped to the bare minimum that I need when I'm working out, and work mode is purely productivity related. Once I've got those sorted, I'll clear out and delete my old home screens and build new pages for every state by just dragging icons into separate pages. Most states will fit onto a single page, but in my standard layout, I've got two, so what I usually do here is put more useful apps like notes, AI tools, and books on the first, and less useful stuff like shopping or social apps tucked away on the next page. After that, we just need to tie all these pages into specific focus modes, which will make each page very intentional. So to start, I'll hold down on the home screen, tap the three dots near the bottom and uncheck the pages that aren't in my standard state and hit done. Then I'll go into settings, go into focus, and I'll hit the plus icon to make custom modes for each state. You'll see that there are some options that I can select from here like fitness, which I will need so I can use that one. And for the others, I can go to custom and give them a name and an icon. But once we go through that, we've got a focus mode for each of our states and we can go into whatever particular focus mode that we want to and scroll to customize screens, where we can customize the screens for that particular focus mode, whether it be the lock screen, home screen, or even a watch face, but I'm just gonna choose home screen and select the pages that I made for that particular state or focus. From there, within a specific focus, you can set schedules or triggers for when each of these kick on. My fitness focus kicks on automatically because I selected it from that template option when I created it. Work, I'll just toggle on manually, so I'm not going to worry about that. And morning, I'll set from 5am to 8am. You can also make them location based if that's more useful, say if you drive to work and you want to kick them on when you get there. Up from that, you'll see that I 
Click and silence notifications when in any particular focus mode. When I'm in my fitness focus mode and really any other mode outside of the standard one for that matter, I generally silence all notifications and I'll just allow them for my wife in case there's something important I need to know, but you can choose to do that or let notifications through from specific apps here as well. Also, if your phone is able to run Apple Intelligence, you'll have this intelligent breakthrough option where iOS will only show you what it deems to be priority notifications and silence everything else, but obviously you do give up some control by doing that. That's all I'm going to do in here and now my screens are just a lot more intentional and when I toggle focus modes, I'll only see the screens for that particular state. It's sort of like organizing your fridge where you're more likely to eat the stuff that's in front of you versus stuck way in the back and I think this just works a lot better for me personally. Now that really isn't specific to iOS 26. But one thing that is, or at least has been updated for iOS 26, is the use of Apple intelligence in shortcuts. And you can make some genuinely useful shortcuts with this addition. You'll see if I go into the shortcuts app and hit the plus to create a new shortcut. In iOS 26, there's an Apple intelligence option in here where I can select use model and then choose between local models running on device, more powerful models on the cloud, or I can choose ChatGPT. Just keep in mind that you will need at least an iPhone 15 Pro or an iPhone 16 series phone and above to run anything Apple intelligence related, but I've got a couple here that I've set up and I will link in the description that you can download and look through or modify to what works for you. I'm not going to go over the entire setup of these shortcuts because that would take forever, but let's just go over some of the things that I found the most useful. The shortcut I think that might offer the most value here is this screen on time one that I made that will take all your screen time from the previous week, analyze it, and give you some insight into your usage and some tips to improve it or promote more healthy usage on your phone. You can run that right from the shortcuts app and you'll notice if you go into it and click this little arrow, I get some options here where I can select my device. So say if you have a phone or an iPad that your kids use on your account, you can actually get insight and suggestions for their usage as well. I find running this from the shortcuts app is kind of inconvenient, but if I go into control center, I can press down in there to go into edit mode and I can hit add a control. And if I go down until I see run a shortcut, I can select whatever shortcut I want with that and I can run that directly from control center. I can also move anything around in here as I see fit, kind of like our home screen, including the focus mode selection that we looked at earlier. I can hold down on controls in here for more details or adjustments or add on other controls like HomeKit automations, but there are still some really useful shortcuts that I want to get to here. One tool that I find extremely beneficial is an advanced audio transcription shortcut. I watch a lot of tech events and I often find that I struggle between wanting to just enjoy the event and taking notes for them for these videos. And with this shortcut, I can just record the video in my voice memos app and after it's done, I can go to the share menu like I would if I wanted to share the file and scroll down to the transcribe audio shortcut. When I click that, it's gonna transcribe that audio file and create an Apple note for it, but it'll also give me some options where I can do a word for word transcription a detailed summary of the audio with all the important relevant info listed, or it has another option that will give me contextual information outside of the event. So if we take the current Apple event, it's talking about the iPhone 17, but the last option will not only give me details about that, but it'll tell me about how it differs from the previous generations. If you wanted to, you could even use this for meetings and even tweak the prompt a little bit to give you more context for whatever you need. And I just think that shortcuts in general with Apple intelligence are super useful. I've also got one that utilizes the share menu on images in the same way for breaking down scenes or compositions and tells me how I can replicate it just for ideas and my own creativity. And I've got another one set up that's actually attached to my action button where if a video idea pops in my head, I can capture that through my voice and it'll store it in a special folder in my notes and generate a few more options based on that particular idea that might be helpful. To set that up, I'll just go into settings and under action button, just scroll to shortcut where again, I can select whatever shortcut that I want and that's all you need to do there. 
Now, there are still some other shortcuts that I find quite useful that I will link in the description as well, but let's dig into some of the built-in features that are specific to iOS 26 that can be quite helpful, which, fair warning, most of these will probably only work with Apple Intelligence supported devices, but let's start off with battery optimization. Let's say that you know you're going to be using your phone a lot during the day and you want to make sure that your battery is going to last the full day or maybe you forgot your charger or whatever the case may be. If you head into settings under battery and in power mode, new in iOS 26, you'll see an option to toggle on adaptive power, which is going to intelligently make performance adjustments as you use your phone for things like brightness, allowing some actions to take longer and automatically entering low power mode when you hit 20% battery life. Another feature I find not a lot of people know about in iOS 26 is the new visual intelligence screenshot feature where if you take a screenshot by holding the power and volume up buttons, you've got some new options in here. You can still do all the things that you could before like cropping or marking up an image, but you'll notice that I can now draw on the screen to highlight aspects of it and iOS will then perform a Google search of that selection where I can swipe up to see the results, kind of like circle to search if you've used a recent Android device. I can also click the button in the bottom corner to ask ChatGPT something about the image here and I do find myself using this a lot more. And the nice thing is when you hit this X icon in the top left, that actually throws away the screenshots, so your photo album isn't going to be cluttered with a bunch of pointless screenshots. iOS 26 also has some nice everyday usability upgrades within the phone app that can help you save some time and keep you organized or less distracted. The first being call filtering, and we're just going to make sure that's turned on by going into the phone app hitting the menu button in the top right and go to manage filtering. That will take you into your settings to the call filtering option and if you toggle that on, that's going to take any unknown missed calls or voicemails and silence them and move them into a specific unknown caller list. And keep your call list a lot cleaner, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. In the same menu, which you can access by going into settings and phone, you can also screen unknown callers where any calls from unsaved numbers are asked for more information before your phone rings. You can toggle that on here, or there is another option where you can completely silence them as well. Finally, probably my favorite phone feature is called Hold Assist, which you can select while you're on a call that will hold your place in line without you having to sit around and wait on the call and that just frees up your time to do other things without being bothered. All of these features and setup don't even begin to touch all the new features in iOS 26 and some of them aren't specific to iOS 26 but they're the things that I found to be the most useful while using it. If there's anything that I did not mention here that you find useful in iOS 26 or just iOS in general please leave a comment down below and share them, but that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video or you found it useful, feel free to hit that like button if you'd like to see more tech-related content or help me build a shortcut that renames every selfie you take as Portrait of Regret. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.